real joy. Let's all stand. We're going to sing. We're glad you're here today. If you're a friend of God, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Let's sing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? You are thinking of me, how you love me. It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? you love me it's amazing I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am a friend of God he calls me friend I am a friend of God I am a friend of God Friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? Aren't you glad when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? And how you love me? It's amazing. He calls me 
trust him it's easy to talk about that but sometimes not so easy to do that today let's trust him guys what are you waiting on start it come on we got honey in the rock sometimes you got to search and kind of dig into the crevice to find it Jesus is the honey in the rock come on Daph lead us There's honey in the rock, water in the stone Manna on the ground, no matter where I go I don't need to worry, now that I know Everything I need, you got There's honey in the rock Somebody say amen Praying for a miracle Thirsty for the living well Sweetness at the mercy seat Now I've tasted It's not hard to see Only you can satisfy There's honey in the rock 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 The Spirit is bounding in the wilderness. You are always satisfied. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, better on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Looking, I keep finding You keep giving Keep providing I have all that I need You are all that I need I keep praying You keep moving I keep praising You keep proving I have all that I need You are all that I need I have all that I need You are all that I There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plane, power in the blood, hidden in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Jesus, who you are is enough. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock There's honey in the rock Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is To trust in you, Jesus Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is To trust in you, Jesus Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is To trust in you, Jesus Sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. 
just to take him at his word just to trust every one of his promises just to know thus saith the Lord we've come together today to worship Jesus yeah we may have came because we had some friends that were gonna be here we may have came because we like to go in the cafe and get a hold of those donuts we may have came just because you love to hear Tanya sing or you love to hear Daphne sing maybe you came today because you just didn't have anything else to do but listen you're not here by accident you're here by divine appointment let God work into your heart today and work into your mind today let him become the very air that you breathe he is worthy church he is worthy every blessing that we have he is worthy today's father's day bless you fathers all over the congregation you are a role model and you are a mentor to your children to your grandchildren what a blessing put everything else aside and just worship Jesus it's all about you this is the air I breathe this is the air I breathe your home
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. As we have sang that, guys, go ahead and play. Listen, as we sing that, and we talk about being desperate, or being lost without Jesus, I would say if we were honest, most of us would say that there's been times that we've felt desperate. And maybe in a relationship, maybe something at work, it may be a health issue with one of your children or one of your grandchildren. It may be a loss that you just can't understand. And it would become desperate. I heard a motivational singer say, if you want to know what desperate is, I can tell you what desperate is. Take a person by the hair of their head and stick them under water and as they begin to fight and begin to struggle they become desperate to breathe you'll fight you'll do everything you can to breathe and when you bring them back up they'll know what desperate is when we want God in our homes when we want God in our church when we want God in our families, when we want God in our children, as desperate as we want to breathe, that's when revival comes, church. That's when God's people fall on their face and we begin to see the Spirit of God move. And lives changed, families changed, homes changed, not just for a short time, but for eternity while the ages roll and they roll and they roll we're going to sing this song again from the very top and listen I want you to sing and when you say you're desperate for God I want you to sing it just as desperate as you are to breathe and if there's something in your mind that's dragging you down now ask God to clear it ask God to take it and trust and believe he will. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. He's here, church. Living in me. How bad do we want him? This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word He's speaking to you now Spoken to me Yes And I Jesus more than 
anything in this world. Desperate enough that you want him so bad as much as you want to breathe. Jesus, fill this place with your spirit. Lord, we're nothing without you. Let your children know today. Lord, they're saved by the blood of Jesus. We love you, Father. As your spirit fills this place and bears witness to us as children of the King, we give you praise on your glory. This is the air we breathe, people. I'm lost without you. This is it. This is the air I This is the Good job. Praise him with your hands. That's You can be seated. Good job, good job, good job. Desperate, lost without Jesus. I was uh I was kind of teasing the praise team this morning. I had a birthday this week. And I turned 63 years old. A lot of you guys are saying, wow, he don't look that old. I, I know that's what you was thinking. But there's like five of the praise team that have June birthdays. And so 63 years of experience, God has blessed me in my life, and I have fell short, and I have failed him. And I am lost without him. If you don't know Jesus today, please, Please don't leave here today without settling it, without accepting Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior. He will change your life. Everything won't become a bed of roses, but there's an eternity out there that He's going to lead you to. If we can have some ushers come forward, we'll continue to worship through our giving. If you're visiting today, we're glad you're here. If you got a visitor's card, you can just drop it into the offering plate at the end of the service. Brother Marty Coke and I are the kind of heads up our greeters will be over here. We want to talk to you. We want to get to know you. We want you to be part of our family. We are God's soldiers marching on, marching on, marching on. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Oh, Father, it's good to be in your house, singing to you, praising you, praying to you, because you are the only true God, and you are the only way to heaven. And Lord, as we continue to worship in our giving with our tithes and our offerings and our Operation Joy, Lord, we're lost without you. Continue to take it. Continue to use it. Continue to multiply it for the evidence of your kingdom, Jesus. We love you. We give you praise, honor, and glory for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, congregation. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, praise team. Great job. Children, kindergarten through fourth grade, you can be dismissed to the joy zone. You're going to have some awesome fun back there. You're going to be singing about Jesus. You're going to be making crafts. If you're really good, you're probably going to get a snack. I said something about a snack, and there was four or five of you adults started to go. Gary's back here playing a solo. Yes. Is God amazing or what? He is. He's amazing. He is amazing. Pastor Tony, we love you, brother. Come and share. If you appreciate Pastor Tony, say amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Am I good? Okay, I'm good. Yeah, depends on who you ask. Yeah. Uh, this morning, Mike told me, he said, are you staying out of trouble? I'm like, hmm, depends on who you ask. I guess uh, the thing is, people tell me I caused the trouble. I said, I represent that. So, hey, uh, good morning. Happy Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. We're glad you're here. I need to break just for a moment and recognize our fathers. And uh, I'm thrilled to death to see you fathers and, and everyone here. I'll talk about those individuals here in a moment. But uh, I do have some awards, you know, like we gave away to the women this year. We're going to give some stuff to the men as well. And um, so I have this uh, handy dandy. Uh, uh, Um, handy dandy grill set for the men today. Not for, for the winners. Not everyone's going home with one. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it that way. Some of you might buy it from someone, you know. But uh, I'm looking for the, the person today, the man today, the father today that has been the Christian the longest. Has anyone been a Christian? Let's see. Uh, how about this? I'm, I'm anyone over 50 years? Raise your hand. All right, Tom, Dad, anybody else? 50 years? Back there, Lloyd? Uh, 55. 61. Can anyone beat 61? Mike, how, how long you been Christian? 63? Dad, how long you been a Christian? He went to South Point. What's that? <laughs> so how long have you been a Christian? 65 years? Awesome, okay, anyone beat 65? 65, 65, 66, 66, 66, 67, 67, 67, 67. All right, Dad, I know you love to grill. Well, here you go. Congratulations, Dad. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, the father has been a Christian the shortest amount of time. Shortest amount of time. Anyone been a Christian less than a year? A father, less than a year. Anyone at all? Frank? Anyone beat a year under a year? All right. Tammy, come get this for Frank. All right, all right, let's give this to Frank. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Father who has the most children present, the most children present. Anyone have 10 kids here? 
If, 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 they, if they got 10, you need to be praying for them. How about uh, five? Anyone got five children present? Be fruitful and multiply. It says that really easy in Genesis, okay? Four. All right. How many you got four? How many you got four? Just two of yours? Are they, are they in your family, though? They're what? You're, oh, okay. <laughs> Can you claim them on your income tax? Oh, dang, got it. All right, I was trying to help you out, brother. I was trying to help you, especially come tax season. Dustin, all right, you have four children. They're all yours. Here you go, buddy. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, I think that's it. These were, these were just in case there was a tie. Whew. I learned my lesson on the women, the women's time. And I was like, oh, we, we were dividing down the months and days. All right, well, today's being Father's Day. I, I want to acknowledge all the fathers. If you're a father, would you please stand? And I, remain standing until I ask you to sit down. Okay? Yes. All right, now, I, I, I'm not done yet, I'm not done yet. Stay standing, stay standing. If you're a man, 18 and above, stand. 18 and above, that means you don't have any children, but you're, you're 18 and above, would you stand up as well? Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, now, now hold, hold on just a second. I want you to turn around and look around the room. All right, look at all these men standing. Church, count yourself blessed because a lot of churches don't have any men in them at all. The men have left the church. In fact, that's a great book. It's called Where Have All the Men Gone? And it's talking about why are the men leaving the church because they forget about being manly things. Men like to do manly things. And so I am grateful, I am blessed, and church, we are blessed that these men 18 and over are here today. So let's give them all another round of applause, please. You guys can sit down. <clears throat> Men have not only left the church, but they're also missing in the families. Uh, some may be living in homes, but they're still, the husband might be there, the father might be there, but they're actually still missing because they're either working all the time or they're on that electronic device that many of you are holding in your hands even now. You know, uh, Trisha and I, we go to uh, a restaurant in Kingston every Friday because you don't get service. And I make her talk to me. <laughs> because there's no internet service, there's no cell service, and it's all blocked in. And so we have to look at each other and go, So we talk. So <clears throat> we're all about us at times. But did you listen to these statistics before I, I get going in the service? The United States Census says that there's nearly 19.5 million children that grow up without a father in a home. That's more than one out of every four children live without a father in a home physically. If you add the number of fathers who are there but absent, the number would increase significantly. So men, it starts with you being the spiritual leader in the home. It starts with you being that Christian leader in the home. Showing your children it's okay to love your wife. My wife, she smacks me down all the time. Quit chasing after me. I said, how about a little, little smoochy? She said, leave me alone. No. That's like saying sick him to a dog. That's a... That's like a challenge accepted. You tell me no, I'll wear you down, lady. I'll wear you down. I want, I want my children to see that I love my wife, okay? I also want them to see that I love God. Uh, I, I want them to see me worshiping the Lord. I was really into it today, Mark. Where are you at, Mark? I was on the rock, and did you see me? I was, hey, 
That's my worship, you know. My brain's going 100 mile an hour, but you got me doing this. Brother, and I know what you mean. We need to be desperate for the Lord. Uh, I want you to know, man, it's okay to love your children. It's also okay to tell them that you're sorry, that you made a mistake, but love on them. Listen to this, listen to this. When a child is raised in a fatherless home, this is how it can affect a child. They're seven times more likely to become pregnant. They're more likely to have behavioral problems, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, more likely to go to prison, more likely to commit a crime, and two times more likely to suffer from obesity, and two times more likely to drop out of school. Now granted, trust me, I know homes, just life in general can be crazy. And society wants to tell men to act like a woman. Men, it's time to be men. There's nothing wrong with being Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> All right, there's nothing wrong with that. You're going to learn through pain sometimes. But there's nothing wrong with being a manly man. Listen to this, men. That's talking about the social side of things. But when it comes to the spiritual side of things, if a child will get saved first, only 3.5% of families will get saved to follow. That means if a child comes to school, maybe someone brings them to school, brings them to church, they get saved during the, the church. They bring the neighbor kid and they go to DBS and they get saved. Chances are that the whole family will get saved only 3.5%. 3.5. That's good for little Johnny to go to church. We make sure he goes to church every Sunday. What about you? Oh, no, that's our babysitter. We get to send him away and we get to have time to ourselves. What'd you do? Oh, nothing, really. Just sitting around on the couch. I did nothing. Get this. If the wife gets saved, if the mother gets saved first, only 17% of the family will get saved, the whole family. So if the wife gets saved and she, she's, you know, and I hate to say this, griping at her husband, you need to go to church with me, you need to go to church with me. And, and then only 17% of the whole family will get saved. Listen to me, men. If the husband, the father gets saved first, 93.5% of the whole family will get saved. Men, don't let society tell you that you're not important in that home or in that child's life. Don't let the, the, the world tell you that you do not, uh, it doesn't matter what's happening in your life spiritually. You, God designed it for you to be the spiritual leader in the family. So men, if you are the spiritual leader, your family will follow. Stand up, be that spiritual leader. You know why churches have women and stuff having to fill all these different roles? It's because the men have left the church and they don't want to be the spiritual leader. So the lady says, someone has to do it. We will do it. Men, stand up. God has set it up for you to be a spiritual leader in the family. Do it. Challenge, do you accept? That really has nothing to do with the sermon today. <laughs> Didn't cost you anything extra. But I'm just telling you, God wants you to be the spiritual leader. And if your family's in disarray right now, if your family's in disarray right now, if there's if you're divorced, you're living in separate homes, be active, take a part in that child's life. They're still watching you, okay? Now, let's take our Bibles, turn to Revelation. We're on week 42 of Revelation study. And so, oh, you got it. Oh, you guys are missing it, yeah. All right, pastor, raise that sword, right? Man cannot live by bread alone. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you guys gotta, you got, you got to uh, remind me. 
You know, I tell everybody all the time, I said, you think it's bad out here from what comes out? You ought to be in here. It's really bad. Revelation 22. We're going to go back to verse 4. We started on it last week. I touched on it a little bit last week, but there wasn't enough time in last week's sermon. So I'm adding it to this week. We're going to go from 4 through 7. And uh, I want to talk about something that we talked about a little bit about uh, last week, but we really need to dive into this a little bit deeper. So Revelation chapter 22, verse 4 through 7. And the Bible reads this way. They will see his face. Remember we talked about that last week, being able to be in the very presence of God and see his face to face. And his name will be on their foreheads and there'll no longer be any night and they will not have a need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, these words are faithful and true and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets sent his angel to show his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And behold, I'm coming quickly. Blessed is he who heeds the words of the prophecy of this book. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now to thank so much for the power of prayer. Father, I thank you for all the men in this room, for the, from the young teens all the way up through to the oldest one, Father. I'm so thankful that men are represented here. And Father, not only are they represented, but they're serving, they're involved being the spiritual leaders, not only in the family, but also in the church. And I thank you for them. We never want to take that for granted. But God, as we open your word today, we look at the revelation of what's going to happen in the future. God, we're just so thankful that you have wrote down what we can experience and what we're going to experience when we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And oh, how wonderful it's going to be. And so God, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. I know it's Father's Day, but Father, you have set the example for us to be fathers. We love you. We thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's look at verse four. I told you we'd all go back to this today. Verse four, we talked about seeing him face to face, but the second part of that verse says this. Look, they will see, see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. His, his name will be on their foreheads. Now, wouldn't that be something pretty awesome right now if all Christians had the name of God on their forehead. I mean, seriously, we'd be able to know who was a Christian and who wasn't. We'd know who, we'd know who the sheep were and who were the, the wolves in sheep's clothing. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pretenders. You know, hey, I'm a Christian right now when, I, when I'm with these people, I'm a Christian and I'm with these people, I'm not so much. <laughs> you know, I tell people, you, you speak two languages? And I'm not talking French and Spanish. I'm talking about I got one kind of language I use around Christian friends and one kind of language I use when I'm not around Christian friends. And the Bible says, do not let any unwholesome word come out of your mouth. So cursing is not, not a very good word to come out of your mouth. Wouldn't it be something if you could walk up? Oh, brother, how do you know? It's written on your forehead. You ever met someone that's a stranger and you go, I, seem, I think I know you. How, I just, it just seems like, and, and I always tell everybody, no, it's the Holy Spirit that has brought you together. The same Spirit's living in him as is living in you. And so it's almost like you knew each other. What if I told you that there are actually signs of those who are actually sealed, who are have uh, in Christ right now? What if I told you that the Bible tells us that as Christians, we're already sealed. We have, we have that signature already. Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. <clears throat> Go to Ephesians chapter one. And verse 13 and 14, look what it says here. In 
In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So before we go on to the next part, if you have heard the truth, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. If you've heard the gospel presentation and you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are who he's talking about here and you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, right? You have been, I, I can't make this up. Look, it says you are healed with the Holy Spirit. You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit A promise. It's a promise. Verse 14, who has given us a pledge of our inheritance with the view of the redemption of God's own possession to praise of his glory. Now, I tell you what, I don't know why Christians walk around acting like they're the, they're the most boring, the, the most... Uh, uh, <laughs> Christians, you gotta be smiling ear to ear. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a whole lot better. Especially for those who don't know Jesus, who's not sealed, who has, doesn't have that promise of, of God saying, hey, look, I'm gonna do exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, go to, verse, go, go to chapter four, go to chapter four. Chapter four, verses 24 through 32, 24. Turn a, a few pages, look, look what it says right here. Chapter four, verse 24. And put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Be angry not let, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with one who has need. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another. Some of you ought to underline that. Circle it, start, do whatever you got to do. Forgiving each other just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. I think my face just got red on that one. That's a lot of stuff. Hey, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I, remember I told you there's some people who are pretenders, I'm the great pretender. Listen to me. You should not be the same person when you come to know Jesus Christ. Okay? Your life should be changing. It's not automatically. It is a working out your salvation to show your neighbor, hey, I'm not the person I used to be. I'm saved. My old life is gone. I'm not that person. I'm trying not to be them. But hey, listen, I am changing. I'm trying to look more like Christ when I look in the mirror. That's the way we ought to do it because you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And you know that little voice, you go, you tell, you tell that little lie at work, I got me up feeling good today. I'll call it in. Let's go fishing. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And then you go, oh, I know I'm going to be posting something on Facebook with me fishing. I'm going to get fired. I shouldn't have been doing that. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. We, we block him out. Your language. You know, when you're at work and you swing that hammer down and you hit the wrong nail and you say, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's not really what you say, is it? Uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, listen, we should all be striving to be different because Jesus Christ is living in us. 
and I'm sealed. They should be able to tell the difference between you and the non-Christian if you're a Christian. If you're, if you're a non-Christian, don't always look at the Christian who says they're a Christian. Look at what they're doing. You know, a lot of people say, a lot of people like to talk about, hmm. it's not in my notes, but I feel like I need to say this, okay? A lot of people say, Christians are not supposed to judge. The Bible says you can judge a tree by its fruit. We like to say, when we're doing something wrong, we said, we'd like to pull that verse out of nowhere and say, you're not supposed to judge me because, hey, listen to me. The Bible says you can tell a tree by its fruit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Because if you're a Christian, you'll bear the right fruit. You shouldn't have to worry about someone judging you. Now, if you want to judge me on my past, we all got a past, Okay. I don't live there anymore, neither do you. Jesus paid for that sin, and I don't have to worry about it. Don't bring it up, because I've already forgot about it. He wiped up the slate clean. <clears throat> there should be a change in this. Now, we know this is not the first time that we've seen about marks on people in, in the book of Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. It would be so much easier that if, if you want to judge, look at the name on the forehead. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, he says he's a Christian, but he's not. Oh, they say they're a Christian, they're not. How do you know? It's not on the forehead. We have stamps out front, and if you guys want to stop by, <laughs> we do have several tattoo artists in the church. I don't recommend that on the forehead, okay? I just, no. Wouldn't that be something? The, the, we, the. Uh, bleh, 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 folks. Uh, <laughs> we put that fish in them on our car. And then we honk at people and tell them they're number one when they cut us off. That's why we don't do follow me to real joy signs on the car. And it's, uh, I had some people in the church we was giving out those, uh, those uh, stickers on the windows and, and they said, I don't want one of those. I said, why not? He said, I'm not a very good driver. <laughs> I said, I understand. All right. But look at Revelation chapter seven, verse two and three. Look what it says here. We, we saw this coming, we saw this coming. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their what? Foreheads. Foreheads. I don't know what that's going to be like. You know, uh, if you watch the Left Behind series, it's kind of like something that was uh, glow in the dark or something and it was cross symbol or, fit. I don't know. But, but go back a little bit further. Go to Revelation 3.12, Revelation 3.12. Look what it says here. He who overcomes, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven and from my God and my new name. What it says is go, hey, I'm going to write a name on him. I'm going to make him a pillar of the temple, temple of God. And I started doing some research on that. I started looking into it. And I, and I said, you know what? Back in during this time, because we have to sometimes go back to when the writing was happening, there were different temples all over the place for different gods. In fact, if you read about Solomon, God told Solomon, he said, don't bring them foreign wives into my temple. They're not allowed to come in there and worship. And Solomon goes, okay, I'll build them a temple right beside yours. So they would say, this is, a, this is the God of this person. This is the God of this person. This, this is the God of this. This is the temple of this God, this God, and this. And, and did you see what he says? I'm, I will write my name on your forehead, and I'm going to make you a pillar in the family of God. 
in his temple. You know what? Isn't that ex- he draws such a pretty picture there. Men, women, Christians, you are a pillar in the temple of God. You are actually holding up the family of God, the church of God. Right now, as a member of God's family, you're a pillar in that temple. How strong are you holding up? When I'm at the weakest, he's at the strongest. how we need men and women, boy and girls, to be the temple pillars for the Lord and not for the world. Oh, I'm all about this movement. (laughs) I'm all about this month. (laughs) I'm all about, you know, this is my my thing. Hey, listen, we need men and women, boys and girls, teenagers to stand up and be pillars for God. You know what? I'm tired of being told what I need to do and what I don't need to do. If it's not in God's word, mm, you know what? You need to talk to somebody else. I'm sealed. The Holy Spirit's living in me. I'm shutting down on what they're telling me. I've been watching more Andy Griffith and Hogan's Heroes and uh, what some of the other ones we've been watching, Trish. Uh, it, we, Carol Burnett show. Okay. The, I tell you what, you're not going to pipe in Ernest T. Bass. You ain't heard the last of Ernest T. Bass. I don't chew my cabbage twice. That's Andy Griffith. Listen to me. You're not going to, I'm not going to pay for you to pipe it into my house and tell me what I need to believe and what I need to accept. We'll be eating at that restaurant a lot, talking to each other. Go go to Ezekiel. Turn all the way back to the Old Testament. Let's go go back to Ezekiel, chapter 9. Chapter 9. Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4. If you find Psalms, Proverbs... Just keep turn, turning to the right. You'll find Isaiah, and then you'll find Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. The Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city even through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations which are being committed in its midst. Mark, that's desperate. Hey, if we were going to go through the city today and put marks on your forehead about people who are sighing, who are people who are actually hurting on the inside about how bad our country's gotten, Will we put a mark on your forehead? We need men and women to stand up and say, that is wrong. I'm standing up on what God's word says. That's the kind of men and women we need. Put a mark on your forehead. That's not me. That's wrong. That goes against God's word. You still love them. But listen, what they're teaching is wrong. We need people to actually groan over that. I mean, it just hurts me. It makes me sick inside. You know, it's sad when one of your children come to you and go, Dad, I'm not sure I want to have any kids. To have to live through all this stuff. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? I said, you can't count on the world. You've got to count on God. And you better be having some kids, okay? <laughs> once you're married, once you're married, once you're married. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. I see. Uh-huh. All right. Let's go back to Revelation. Go back to Revelation. Let's go, let's go to Revelation 22, verse 6. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> the, the, this morning, I was sitting right out there and I was eating a cookie. 
after I already had a donut, after I already had a, a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle, after I already had two cappuccinos, and I got bifocals, and literally, Mark was standing right beside me. He goes, Tony. I said, Mark. I said, I'm sorry, but my mind was going really bad. And, and with bifocals, I'm a nose pointer. So if I'm not looking at you, okay, I don't see you. And he was like my, this blurry vision sight. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. and he said that. And you know what? We need people to start looking through biblical glasses when we see what the world's passing out out there. So we can point our nose right to it. All right, I'm going to focus right here. I'm going to focus right here. Don't let it get blurred. Don't look through worldly glasses. Look through biblical glasses. Okay? 22.6, 22.6. Look what it says here. And he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his bond service of things which must soon take place. The writer was talking about the, the book of Revelation, but I want to tell you one thing. These words are faithful and true. Cover to cover. Not just the book of Revelation, but the whole Bible is true. And you give the world enough time, they'll catch up. They'll keep Do you know the Bible years and years ago when it was written said that the life is in the blood? Meaning you, you don't have any blood, you, you're going to die. Guess how Washington died? Bled him to death. The barber, the red and white pole, they used to be bleeders. They would, I'm not feeling good today. Well, come on in, you got too much blood. Mm -hmm. Life's in the blood. The Bible talks about dinosaurs. Well, the dinosaurs haven't been around. How do you explain that with Adam and Eve? Well, they, they, weren't, they weren't meat eaters until sin entered the world. And the word dinosaur didn't come around to the 1800s. But in fact, if you go into the book of Job, it talks about dinosaurs. It's true. It's true. And they just keep digging things up and firing up more and more. But it says, hey, look, these things are faithful and true. We started teaching, teaching and preaching on the book of Revelation back in February. And you can go online and the majority of those are on there. We've been walking through all of it verse by verse. And it's funny how these things that we've been reading about are unfolding in our very eyes right now. It's like it is, I can't believe we're living in this time of what's coming. But whenever I read these things and I, and I see, man, there's some bad stuff gonna happen. When I, when I read about the horsemen coming and the, and the, the third of the, the, the dead, the animals and the, the sun and, and all that. The, and then the, the mark of the beast in order to buy, sell, and trade. And, and then I, I read about the waters turning blood and, and I read about all those bad things happen. Guess what? They're gonna be true. You can count on it. But you know what? The good things are gonna to happen too. The, the tree of life. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. Hey, you, you know what? The, the, the uh, streets of gold, and, and, and we get to talk about the, the water, of, and the river. You see all that? The fruit, all that stuff is true. How do you know, Pastor? How do you know something's going to be true in the future? You know what? He hasn't lied to me yet. He's been faithful and true from cover to cover. I can count on it. So, you know what that means? I can count on one day he's coming back to get me. He's coming back to get you if you're a Christian. If you're not, you're going to have to live through all everything we studied. And then if you go to verse 7, look at verse 7. Behold, I come quickly. Now, I'm going to tell you what the world's going to tell you. Quickly, 
Jesus died when he was 33 AD. Book of Revelation was written about 70 AD, somewhere around there. All right? So if you take 70 from 2023, we're well into the 1900s, right? That don't seem very quick to me, brother. All right, all right. I, I, wanna, I wanna give you a little bit of an example. All right, God does not look like time like what we look at time. He says that a day could be like a thousand years and a thousand years could be like a day. I was talking with someone just coming this morning said, man, the church is wonderful. It's first time here. Great, glad you're here. Think about this. Think about this this way. From this corner to that corner, that, all that drywall there was from the year Jesus' birth to where we are now, okay? 2,023 years. I want you to look at all the rest of the drywall. That's time. That's eternity. I come quickly that's a short amount of time compared to all the rest of time. Whenever I'm going through a tough time in life, and I say Christians can sometimes be the most pitiful, saddest looking, and how you doing? Oh, it's just, I'm just going through. It's just, you know what? Bad things happen to good people still. But you know what? I know that I have a Savior that loves me. More than anything. He loves me more than I love myself. He loves you more than you love yourself. And and all these things that he's promised, an inheritance, I'm a child of the king. I tell people all the time, you can call me Prince Tony. I'll call you prince and princess, okay? But everything that Jesus receives as being the child of God, his son, God the Father, God the Son, I'm adopted in his family and I get that same stuff. And so when I die, I get all those blessings. And so in this short amount of time here, I might struggle a little bit. I've told you I've got kidney issues and sugar issues, vision. But you know what? Man, I have a blast. I laugh a lot. I mean, Mike, I do cause most of the problems, okay? And I giggle about it. I, I'm a... I got a big paddle. I will stir it and giggle and giggle because you know why? Life is fun. I might have some ups and downs. You will too. And I might have some times where the season seems like, Lord God, I can't take much more. Hang on to the promises because when God says these things are faithful and true, they are faithful and true true. God has never not been faithful. So my questions to you today, I have three questions. Three questions. Three questions I want to ask you. Would you consider yourself blessed today? No, hey, I, I don't know, Pastor, if you just knew where my life... No, I'm telling you, as a Christian, you're blessed. I, Hey, life might not be good right now, but I'm blessed. God has blessed me tremendously, a lot more than I deserve. How about you? Look at, look at the glass of being half full versus half empty. Next question. Would you consider yourself sealed today? Are you sealed in the Holy Spirit? Have you had that time where you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior where he seals you, said, this was mine. The Bible says nothing can snatch you from my father's hand. 
That even means you. I'm sealed. Are you? Third thing, if Jesus would come back quickly right now, where would you spend eternity? Where would you spend eternity? If he came back right now, in the twinkling of an eye, as the Bible says, we're out of here. Where would you spend eternity? Would you spend it in heaven or in hell? You might be telling someone you're a Christian. You might not know for sure you're a Christian or you do know. I'm either a Christian or I'm not. I'm a saint or an ain't. Listen, no pretenders standing in the presence of God. He knows you. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I want you to spend eternity with me, but more importantly, I want you to spend eternity with him. If you have not trusted Jesus Christ, today you have that opportunity. Today you can come forward and say, hey, I want to trust Jesus. We'll have someone walk you to another room, ask you a few questions, show you what God's word says, have prayer with you and walk you through that whole situation. We will not, we will not force anyone to make that decision. Bring a friend with you, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're not sure. You know what, pastor, I, I'm not, I, am I sealed, am I not? I, I, why not make sure today? Why not make sure today? Say, hey, yeah, I got some questions, yeah. Well, we have people who are trained to work with you to walk through that process. Answer any questions. You can go home today and making sure. Maybe looking for a church home. We'd love to have you be a part of this church. God's doing some amazing things. I, I don't understand it. I, I, I think about... Someone told me today out in the hallway, boy, things have been going good. I think, you know, it, it, Mark, it really come off real, it looks like, looks like we knew what we were doing. And I said, if you only knew what was going on behind the scenes, brother, you would know. Woo! Kunk, kunk, kunk. But you know what? I can't focus on those things. I can't focus on the bad things that's happened. You see the little blue tape on the wall? OCD. Need to fix that spot. Need to fix that spot. Need to fix that spot. Finally, I had to say, I just got to walk away. I'm going to use a whole roll of tape. But you know what? I can't focus on those things. I got to focus on the good things. And that's the way it should be in our lives. We'd love to have you be a part of our church, be a part. They're doing some amazing things. It's, exci it's exciting. God's, the Christian life is exciting. Even the the attacks. If you're not getting attacked, you're not living the way you should be because Satan is not happy. And so he's going to attack you. If you're not getting attacked, maybe you're not living the way you should be. If you want to be a part of this church, just come forward and say, Pastor, I want to join this church. Whatever decision it might be, come to the altar and pray. I, I don't know. I, but I will say this. Don't go home today not knowing for sure if you're a Christian or not because he is coming quickly. It could be today. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Thanks so much for your word and how it speaks to us. And God, as we've, we've looked at your word today, oh, how it'd be so easy to see if someone was a Christian or not by the mark on their forehead. But God, we know your word says that you are sealed. You have sealed us with the Holy Spirit as a promise that if something happens to us, we'll spend eternity in heaven with you. God, I, I'm praying that your spirit's moving in this room. That if someone doesn't know Jesus Christ, you give them that courage to step out and say, I want to trust him today. <clears throat> if someone wants confirmation, if someone's having doubts, Father, give them that courage. Say, today's the day I want to make sure. Father, maybe someone looking for a church home. We'd love to have them be a part of this church. 
But I pray you give them that courage to step out and say, I want to be a part of this church family. I want it to be the church that I'm a member of, not the church that I go to. Maybe someone's come to the altar and pray, I have no idea, but God, I know you know each heart in this room today. There's no pretenders in your presence. Speak to us now. We ask in Jesus' name.